Let's just talk about our worship a little bit based on these verses that, that Jesus is supreme. You know there's, there's not a pantheon of gods out there, right? There isn't any other alternatives no matter what people say for heaven or hell. It's just those two places forever, with him or without with him. So when we talk about worship, um, praise Jesus for the great things that he's done, um, such as defeating sin and death through his death and resurrection. You want to maintain um, the supremacy of Jesus um, in your life and not whatever phrasing you want to use um, in not being devoted to him, then praise him and celebrate him more in your life. The more you celebrate Jesus in personal worship and corporate worship, the easier it's going to be to do it with your neighbors. It's just going to come out. I love those moments. Be hanging out on the beach, run into my neighbors. Hey, isn't this just, they're like, man, is this such a nice day out? Yeah, yeah. And then I'll be like, praise Jesus. And their eyes get really big. And I'll be like, you know, this day is so great because this is the way that God made it. And they're like, here he goes. And I'm like, here I go. <laughs> right? You share it. It's not that hard. They can't run, not that fast. You ever tried to run in sand? You can't run that fast in sand. So you just share it and you praise Jesus. And then that just comes out just comes out. So I would encourage you, um, you, you. How do you display the supremacy of Jesus in your life? You praise him and you celebrate him more. Uh, let's talk about a communion with others since we're talking about other people. Uh, I say you just give them Jesus. Remember, it is free to be set free by Jesus through no works of their own. It's a free gift of God. They just call in the name of the Lord. They shall be saved. Yes, they've got to wrestle with their sin. Yes, they need to know that they need to be forgiven of their sin. And yes, they need to know that their sin's going to kill them should they die in it. But you can share that with them and go, look, just give them Jesus, the real Jesus of the Bible, the one who bled and died, the one who's supreme over all things. Because it's just a, a fallacy and a mirage to think that Christ isn't in control and authority over everything because he already is. So might as well bring him on, man. Might as well already bring him into that family. And let them know, share your story. Help them to see how Jesus has brought you through. Share a story from scripture. I do it all the time, man. I go into like old man mode all the time with people. And they're like, hey, what do you think, what do you think I should do with this? It's like, let me tell you a story. And I'll just tell them a Bible story. And I'm like, this we're done. Oh, that's pretty good. Where'd that come from? That came from the Bible. And they're like, oh, dang it, got us again. From the Bible. But it's good wisdom. You should share it. I mean, if this is the guy that can hang the planets in the universe and they don't spit out of control, he can help us. Do not underestimate, right? It's more than favorite things. It's priority. Um, here's a great way to serve others. Um, be merciful and faithful just like Jesus. We talked in scripture how he's the merciful and faithful um, high priest. Um, when you act this way towards others, it helps them to see that Jesus is real. Offer mercy and faithfulness. The world is offering everything else the opposite, right? The world just gives you judgment and it gives you unfaithfulness. Or it just tears out what you should be faithful for and go, we'll just change what we should be faithful to whenever we want to change it. But I say to you, be merciful and faithful just like Jesus. Faithful to God's will, merciful to others. Uh, one of the things we say, right, fill the gaps with grace. When you're like, why did she say that? Fill the gap with grace. Why did he do that thing that way? Fill the gap with grace. Respond the way that Jesus would. Help them to do that. That's a way to show that Jesus is supreme is you, 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 you always wonder like, how do I carry my cross? How do I die to myself? This is a way to do it. You offer mercy, you offer grace, and you're faithful to God no matter how hard it is. No matter what it takes, no matter how much fun they make um, of you, or how, no matter how much they try to lavish you with gifts to get you to sell your soul away from Jesus. You say, no, I'm going to be merciful. I'm going to be faithful. And here's how we can sort of multiply one of the many ways we can multiply the supremacy of Jesus Christ in the life of others. Um, discuss how Jesus' way is the only way to live. Help others to know that Jesus can relate to everything that they're going through. Look, I understand it. I get it. There's a disconnect between this, the ancient of days and what people are facing now. They, they want to create that, right? Jesus doesn't make sense. Jesus doesn't apply. Jesus is the, the no fun faith. He takes away everything that's enjoyable. I mean, there's all all these kind of myths that are out there about Jesus. But what we know is in people's core, I tell you this all the time, you try to find points of commonality with people and, and you find things that they love and care about and that's where you meet them with Jesus. Get right at the heart of the matter. Get right to where they are with Christ 
and go, hey man, what do you think about Jesus? And, and how do you respond to Jesus? And, what do you, and you just find what those points are, then that's what you're talking about. Those things that they love, that they invest their time, talents, and treasures into. And then you begin to have that greater conversation about Jesus Christ. Because we already know what? Jesus is the supreme authority. That's never changing. It has always been and always will be that way, his supremacy. It's not going to switch. So we need to help people to to come into that loving relationship with him instead of being against him. Because they're not always going to get a second chance. They're always going to have another opportunity to accept Jesus Christ. It's insane how short life is. So here's what we're going to do. One thing, one last time. Let me just remind you of this. As a Christian, you've got to lock this way in your heart that Jesus is supreme authority over all things which means he's the one you should go to for all things. He's the one that you should seek for all things. He's the one you should worship together and individually and, and all of that together uh, and live in such a way. But he's also the one in which we must answer to for all things, right? Every idle word, every idle thought. And I'm just telling you this because those who can live most free are those who are most committed to who Christ is. You're going to find the person that God wants for you um, to be with the rest of your life. You're going to find the right job that God has for you. You're going to find the right place where he wants you to live. You're going to find the right health that he wants to have for you. I mean, everything that's in there that Christ has. And what does the Bible say? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all of these other things will be added unto you. Which is basically say, you just follow me and don't worry about anything else. I'll provide those things.